In this video, we'll be looking at 1.2, Science and Practice, which is portion of Unit 1, Scientific Inquiry. This time, we're going to be looking at a few, uh, just basically the way that science does things. We looked at Scientific Inquiry and the steps of Scientific Method, but there's, a, there's some other things about science, and it's, this is just a good way to talk about it, Science and Practice. And so there are three basic assumptions that is, are made in science, and this is important. All realms of thought and study have certain assumptions, right? Uh, philosophy, religion, um, anything you want to mention, there are certain assumptions that are made on the front end of those things. Science also has those assumptions. And uh, I think this picture is great because, you know, you have Zeus here, uh, and Zeus was known to throw lightning, right? And so... When science sees lightning, it doesn't assume that there's some sort of supernatural power in play. What science assumes is that there's something natural involved. And so that, that is, that is a, an important distinction. So we're going to talk about the three assumptions of science. The first one is that there are natural causes for natural phenomena. When something is seen in nature, then there is some sort of natural cause associated to that. This is as, a, as opposed to like a supernatural cause, right? Um, science is only seeking to answer questions through gathering data, and that is important. There's a, if we see something in the natural world, we assume that there's a natural cause behind that thing. And that brings us to the next point. Uh, the second assumption is that evidence can be used to learn about those causes. Um, if evidence can't be gathered, then it's outside the realm of science. I use the flat earth as an example. I'll probably use it again in this lecture. Um, and so it this is a great example because up until we were able to gather evidence about the shape of the earth, it was assumed that it was flat because if you look outside, well, it looks flat, right? It's just because the earth is really big. But as we um, learned more about our earth and were able to gather more evidence, we were able to change our initial findings, right? Because um, we were able to gather evidence about our natural world, which tells us that the earth is actually a sphere, not flat. And that brings us to the next step, right? If we, if we can gather that evidence, then we should be able to gather the same evidence all the time, right? And so the Earth, is, or the, not the Earth, the Earth is too, but the, the science assumes that nature is ordered and consistent, meaning that um, we can expect to find the same kinds of things as we go about our studies, meaning just like gravity, all right, uh, this is what the picture is showing you here, that the force of gravity on Earth is going to be generally about the same, no matter where we go. Now, it's not exactly the same, but it's generally going to be about the same because the nature is ordered and consistent, and things are going to generally follow that consistency. And because we can assume that, it helps science to be easier. Other realms of thought do not assume order and consistency, but science always does. And that brings us to the next step in science, and this has to do with peer review. And so let's say you have an experiment, you, um, you've you completed your experiment, you have some findings that you believe to be important to science, and so then you're going to go through this process called peer review. Peer review is basically a process of independent review where other researchers can look at your work and assess it based on have the proper steps been followed? Does this actually make the assumptions that science makes? You know, is this trying to do something supernatural or is this trying to assume that evidence can't be gathered? You get the idea, right? Um, it's a form of like quality control. It uh, tests for the susceptibility of, you know, or the suitability of, of publication. Is this something that we want to share with the scientific community or does this science need more work? right? Does it need to go back to the drawing board? Uh, being able to replicate this is a very important part of science. If you're unable to replicate an experiment, like if it's kind of a one-off, that is not science, right? And that is a, that's actually a really big problem in science today, which we could talk about, but we're not going to. Um, just being able to replicate your experiment is a very important part of science so that others can see it and work on that and build upon that. Science is constantly being added to. And so you, get, you go through the peer review process, and that leads to the next step, which is publication. You're going to publish your findings in some kind of scientific journal. Uh, this is not like a magazine. You're not going to find science on the shelf at Walmart, probably. Uh, I don't think you can. But these are journals, and they're usually very specific to a particular field. 
and you go in there and you read about the current work that's going on in those fields and this is where science is added to and improved upon constantly being constantly learning things asking more questions making new observations that is the process of science you're a scientist you want to learn more about a particular field you read these journals and perhaps it causes you to ask questions and want to do further science and that is the whole idea behind this now there are a couple of words that we throw around in the scientific community and it's important to go ahead and start defining these words and the first one is the word fact <clears throat> when we talk about fact in the scientific community we're talking about an observable kind of truth right uh, when you see this picture what is what is the truth about this picture that is a sloth fact that sloth is hanging on a tree fact he is surrounded by green things fact right no one if you look at that and you say that is a chicken that is immediately disputable because we know what chickens are and we know what sloths are that sloth is hanging on a mountain no it's not it's hanging on a tree right we we, we know what trees are we know what mountains are and so this is opposed to dogma this is important because science isn't dealing in dogma dogma has to do with doctrines that are to believed be believed particularly be to be believed at all cost uh, science is always reassessing what it knows. Dogma never reassesses what it knows. It assumes what it knows to be true. And you know, science. You, when you start, when science starts to get into dogma, that's a problem. Which you know, it happens. Um, it happens for for anything. And so you have to. Science is constantly questioning, constantly asking questions of itself. Now there are some things in science that are called laws. A law is a description of the normal patterns of the natural world. Um, these are kind of like governing principles of the phenomena that we see. They describe how nature behaves in certain circumstances. Uh, here's an example. They, you know, when there's two types of alleles, you don't have to know this example. Uh, this is just something that we will learn about later in the year. But this law of dominance says that the dominant allele always expresses itself over the recessive allele. That is a law it's generally observed in nature, right? And so that is something that we can see that is going to generally be true. Um, there are some facts about this picture, right? There's red cherries and yellow cherries. Yellow cherries are recessive. Uh, red cherries are dominant. These are facts. But the law governing this set of facts is that red is dominant over yellow, right? And that is something that we observe to be true in nature. And that is different than a theory. A theory is an explanation for a broad range of natural phenomena. Um, a theory is an explanation. It is not, um, how do you say this? So we, we talked about hypothesis last time. We said hypothesis is a proposed solution. And then, you know, it, a lot of times people, what people believe is that when you, you kind of have this hierarchy, that maybe one day a hypothesis can be a theory and then maybe one day a theory can be a law and they're kind of waiting to graduate. That's not how this works, right? Um, a theory gathers all this whole realm of thought and it attempts to explain it. And so the, I put a picture up here of Cook's postulates which have to do with the germ theory of disease. Um, you know, used to, we didn't know what caused disease. People would just drink water, the same water that they were emptying their sewers into and they would wonder why they're getting sick. What we don't understand. Why are we getting so sick? Well, then they started linking disease to bacteria and some other things that are going on and realized, oh, wow, this is what's going on. And so the germ theory is just an example, but it, it, it unifies all of that thought into this broad scope. We're, this isn't a hypothesis, right? And so when we use the word theory in sciences, we're not talking about a guess. We don't guess that bacteria cause disease. We know they do, right? But this, the germ theory attempts to explain all the things that are going on about that. You know, take the theory of evolution. Uh, evolution is, is not a guess as far as, as far as science is concerned. It's, it is attempting to explain a broad range of topics. Theories can constantly be changed they can constantly be added to taken away from as we learn more things theories are derived from natural law they're derived from the facts that we know about the world uh, they're derived from scientific experimentation 
and they can be changed. They, uh, theory is not a hard and fact fact of life. And so a lot of times when we use the word theory in our normal words, we will say, well, that's just a theory. But science, the word theory is, is a strong word, right? It's, again, it's an explanation. These words do not represent any kind of hierarchy. A theory is not waiting to be a law. It already has some strength behind it because of what it is. So let's talk a little bit about science and society. Um, there's something called bias, which we're all familiar with. Bias is showing favor for or against something. And there's all kinds of different realms we could talk about bias in, but we're going to look at it in science first, or t in our class. There's two kinds of bias. Uh, there's unintentional bias. This picture is a painting called The Blind Leading the Blind. I, lo I love this painting. And my camera's a little bit in the way here, but they're basically falling into a pit. And it, the blind are leading the blind into this pit. They don't know that they're even falling into the pit. Uh, this is unintentional, right? Uh, there is some bias here. They're, they, they're trying to help each other, um, but they, they don't have the best information because they can't see. And so um, sometimes we have a bias, but it's just unintentional. We're, we're, we just don't have all the information, and so we're leading people the wrong way, but unintentionally doing so. Uh, you could use the flat earth for this. People a long time ago weren't trying to mislead people about the shape of the earth. It's not like there was this secret that was trying to be held back. But now, of course, there are groups that are attempting to continue to hold that the earth is flat for, for whatever reason they have, even though the evidence is so strong against it. Um, but there's also intentional bias. Now, intentional bias, and there's the flat earth again. <laughs> Intentional bias is when people are purposefully trying to mislead others. The people who hold to the flat earth would say that there's this giant conspiracy where we are intentionally holding back the, inf the true information concerning the shape of the earth. Um, that's odd. But anyway, that's beside the point. I'm showing my own biases here. Intentional bias is where you are purposefully trying to mislead, and usually the, the motivation for purposely trying to mislead is money or trying to um, smear someone's character, or there's lots of different reasons that science, science would do this. Uh, there's, some of this has been in the news recently with certain studies that have long thought to be true, but turns out all the pictures were faked in the, in the original data, and why would they do that? Well, there's a lot of money to be made in, in realms like medicine and if you can get a bunch of medicine to be made based on this certain data you have you stand to make a lot of money and so um, that that's why this sort of thing exists and so there's certain setups that have been made in order to to alleviate this I'll use one example when it's talking about medicine uh, and this is something called blind trials a blind trial is an experiment in which groups one of the groups or both of the groups don't have all the information that the experimental group and the control group, these are unknown. Uh, there's double blind trials, so like let's go to the medicine thing. So let's say you have a group of doctors and they're testing a bunch of medicine. And they have one, me one medicine that's actually real uh, that can treat the, the disease that they're trying to test or in another medicine that, they, that isn't real, right? What do we call that medicine that's not real? Well, it's called a placebo. It is like the control, right? It's, it's a, just a pill that doesn't do anything. And so they give some of them the pill that doesn't do anything and some of them the, the actual medicine, which would be the uh, independent variable in this particular experiment. Uh, well, they can do that where the patient doesn't know what they have, but they can also do that where the doctors and the patients doesn't know who has what. And this is a way to protect the experimental data, to keep the integrity of the experiment so that there's no bias going into that experiment. This is important, particularly in realms with medicine that affects people's health. But it, it can be used in any scientific in any scientific realm in order to prevent bias. Uh, 